Hi, I'm Quentin. And I'm Christina. What are you doing? This is Silly Abroad. We packed up and headed to Florida to get a sailboat with no plan and just a dream. I bought the boat, moved it across Tampa Bay to be hauled out for repairs. As the repairs are being done, we're both working full time, spending time with family and saving money. So stay tuned, like and subscribe as I'll be posting often of progress up to launch day. Welcome to Sailing, Sailing Abroad. Abroad. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Quentin. I'm Christina. And we haven't posted a video in a while because we've been busy, 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 working six days a week. But we've come a long ways and we're doing a question and answer video. Q&A, I guess you can say, isn't it? Yeah, that's what they call it. Okay. <laughs> All right. But we're planning on launching soon. Uh, we're going to start. There's a friend of mine, Pinwolf Sailing Adventures, helped me out on this one. From what he uh, could pull up and find we found some questions that do need some answering so how about how you you're planning on making ends meet on the water mm. well we're hoping to get big and famous on youtube i'm not lying <laughs> that's uh proving to be quite difficult but i've been pumping out a lot of content uh right now we're just saving money uh we're living with the in-laws right now, and they're making us save every penny we make and not making us pay anything. I mean, I do chip in when they let me, but they don't like it when I help them with things because they said I need that money. Um, but as far as that, we plan on doing content and making videos and hoping to get monetized soon. And once we move, I plan on continuing to work while he is down there getting the boat ready for our first sail after we... Yeah, because when we first get down there, we're going to leave the boat at the marina, but we're going to be living on the boat, but she's going to be working, but we're going to be... She's going to be going back and forth from work to the boat while I get settled in the boat and get everything situated and we get used to being on the boat. And then uh, probably, what, six months' time? Yeah. Less than six months, we're going to cast the lines and head out and start actually sailing. So that's the plan. So anything you could add to that? Or? I think you covered it all. Okay, yeah, because her job will uh, let her transfer over there to Florida. So she's already got that lined out, I guess. All right, let's, uh, let, me, let me do the next one here. Um... Uh, Oh. How things you expect will be different with all the change, people, and weather patterns? Well, the last time I lived in Florida, it was a lot more fun. Um, you were a lot younger, too. Yeah, I was in my 20s. Um, I was a little reckless with life and it made things more fun. When we went down there to look at the boat to purchase the boat, it was uh, different. Um, that was my first trip to Florida. Yeah, she's never been before until I took her when we go when we went to go buy wind chime. Um, yeah, um, and weather patterns. Um, I've noticed the hurricane seasons are a little more, I guess you could say, meaner. Yeah, stronger. Stronger, lasts a little longer more frequent uh, I guess that's the uh, weather patterns are changing I guess yeah. it happens ever so often ever so many decades or centuries yeah. or something it patterns I guess um, I don't know I guess as of anything being out at sea full-time you just have to adapt or die that's just what it is I don't think it's adapt or die. Just don't go near the hurricane. Yeah, just don't <laughs> go into it. <laughs> Goes the opposite way. <laughs> but that is what it is. Is uh, 
I've never even seen a hurricane or been near a hurricane. I've never even seen a tornado either. No, I've been in Wilma. I was on a boat in Hurricane Wilma. That was... Mm. <laughs> nope. And uh, there's more to that question here. The change with people. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure... Well, I guess you could say people do change with time. Um... The only thing I could think different was over the uh, the recent, how do I word it? Um, gosh, you got to be careful with what you say. It's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. The big stay in your house, don't go anywhere thing has changed a lot of the way things are, I've noticed. Um so far, it seems like it's letting, uh, letting up a little bit, um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, and I only plan on dealing with people. I'm at the marina and near port and everything like that. So that's that's about it on that one that I can think of. Anything you can add? Um, no. No? That's fine. Okay. What's the uh, next one? What extra gear are you playing on? Extra gear, let's see. We've got, we got to get a safety line and uh, get good life jackets. We got to get an EPIRB. Yeah, we got to get an EPIRB and a couple of PLBs. Uh, we've already got a SIMRAD system on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, What's that other thing you plan on getting for the... You got to speak louder. What's that thing you plan on getting for the, the VHF for you? And oh, the AI, AIS. Oh, AIS. AIS. Uh, I plan on getting an AIS receiver, not a uh, transmitter. I don't know if I want to transmit AIS. I'm still on the fence about that. Um, and the only reason is because we do plan on going around Panama. And, and right now, it's... Uh, uh, piracy has gone up quite a bit down there in the Western Caribbean. And uh, I think transmitting AIS probably would not be the best bet. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could get them to where you could turn them on or off. If that's the case, then I might go that route. Um, but as far as a receiver, I, I definitely want a receiver and get it linked up to my uh, SIMRAD so I can get alarms and stuff like that. If there's a big, you know, thousand foot freighter within yeah. a mile or two of us, we'll be able to be alerted of that. Because hell, I think it takes some things, what, a whole mile, two miles to do a, a, a turn. It, it, oh, I'm sure, I mean, yeah, they're, they're big. They're big, <laughs> yeah. I only see them from, we went to Galveston. Yeah, Galveston was, uh, that's one of the busiest ports in the world. Yeah, and they Ugh. were big. I mean, it looked yeah. like there was islands out in the ocean at night because they were so big. <laughs> yeah, all the lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she thought they were islands. No. <laughs> when she seen the ocean for the first time, it was at dark, so she couldn't actually see how big and vast it was. And um, she seen all the lights on the horizon. And she was like, I thought you couldn't see across. I said, you can't. <laughs> and she was like, well, what are those? I said, those are ships. She goes, really? And, that, and when she come outside the first morning, because we were right across the street from the beach right there in the ocean. And uh, she... Uh, seen it and made her stomach turn yeah <laughs> scared me a little bit yeah yeah what other gear can you think of um i don't know i mean uh we're, we're still uh i would like to find a wind vane a uh an autopilot wind vane to bolt on the the back of the boat but um we're having um, a hard time finding one. And we haven't thought about what we're going to use for the internet either. The internet. Yeah, we're not quite sure. Uh, we've been in, looking in the Starlink, but we're not sure yet. Um, or the Iridium Go, I think is what it is. Iridium Go, yeah. That's the only thing uh, other than just basic gear. Uh, maybe a few couple of extra parts. Um, clamps and stuff like that. That's about all. Had to go for a second. The wife has got to go to work, so I guess I'm going to finish out the video by myself. Bye, guys. Yeah.
Yeah, I got a birthday coming up. Yep. A few more subscribers would be great. In seven days. Seven right days. Over here, be yeah, thirty-nine just, years old. Oh. It's <laughs> July Almost. the tenth. Yep. My uh, birthday present. My wife got me an early one. I yep. love this thing so much. This is not endorsed or promoted by the company. This is just my own personal thing. She got me an ocean crawler. Dive watch. I love this thing. But yeah, that's a... Uh, she, know, she knows I like my uh, water toys. and She got me a... I've been wanting one of these for years. I love it. I highly recommend these things. Yeah, he does love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could get them... What is it? Right at a thousand bucks for the cheap ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love them. But anyways, she's got to go to work. Um, I guess I'll finish out the video from here. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to make that money so we can go. All right. And I'll... But all right. Any last words you want to say before you have to go? Bye, guys. Subscribe. Yeah. Love you yep. guys. Don't forget to check out the Patreon, too. That's... Uh, help us out. That would be great. Yep. We're trying to get that put together, but... We're trying to figure it out. So yeah, trying to figure comment, it out. Comment, leave us a comment about how to figure it out. That would be helpful. Yeah, because we're going to have some, uh, what, subscriber prizes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And yeah, some, I have some people that can make a few things. Yeah, some money. merchandise. All right. All right. We'll be right back after she goes to work. And with the magic of video editing, it'll be one second for you, which will be like an eternity for me. <laughs> All right, she had to go to work, so I'm going to finish up this video here. Uh, let me look here. All right. Oh, let me look here. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, I'm going to go find my, my, my questions. There we go. All right, the last question was the extra gear we were planning on. So we'll, uh, the next one down is how are you planning on weather and what are we using? It's actually a good question. Um, As far as planning on weather, um, we're probably just going to do like everybody else does. We're going to keep it, uh, uh, keep apps available. Uh, so our, our Semrad uh, works off a of GPS, and it gives us a, a crude uh, weather uh, reports and stuff like that. I mean, it's enough for me to make a decision, but. Um, we plan on if there's any bad weather expected, uh, we're going to live with the the term, you know, when in doubt, don't go out. So uh, if uh, we're not 100% confident, uh, we're not going to risk it. Uh, there's nothing worth getting hurt or getting killed over, you know, out there on the ocean. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and a lot of things will go wrong. It's just the best thing we can do is, um, you know, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, it's going to be one of those mottos we're going to live by as well. But, uh, and as far as the gear we're using, um, a friend of mine, uh, Pen Wolf Sailing Adventures, got me connected with Anchors and Oars up there, uh, outside where he's got his boat stored at. We got us, I think it was like a 45 pound anchor. We're gonna use it as a storm anchor. Um, we'd like to get a hold of a Mantis. Um, like I'd like to have a storm anchor that's made by Mantis and a, a daily anchor. And even in, even for the dinghy. Um, but uh, we're gonna get 
we got some new winches, uh, some self-tailing winches, some Lumars, I think they are. You know, number 35s, uh, that's what's on the boat now, but they're not safe tailing. They're just two-speed Harkins. Um, and as far as like our anchor road and everything, we're going to get probably going to run maybe 150 feet of chain and probably another 200 foot of road behind that. Uh, we got some snubbers we're, we plan on using, uh, kind of bridling um, and just removing all our lines and windage up on deck. Uh, everything we can that would catch wind, we're going to remove it get it below deck and just kind of hunker down and hope our anchor holds that's if we come across it i mean we are going to come across it i mean it's going to happen that's for sure we're going to get caught out in, out in storms you know that's a definite given um as far as that i can't think of anything else right at the top um And how is your gear I'm using different or the same as factory recommendations? Uh, factory recommendations, I'm not quite sure how. I don't know what come factory on that old boat. Um, I mean, just your basic electronics. I mean, when that boat was factory new, it was uh, things were way uh, different. My boat's a 1983 model. Um, I don't know. I think boats come with pretty basic equipment when you get them new. And I think all the extra stuff is added by boat owners throughout the years. And uh, so far, all the equipment I got on my boat's pretty up to date. Um, anything else is extra, I believe. I've got. One, two, I've got three GPSs on the boat. One's a Semrad that's mounted there on the helm. Um, and the other one is like a little fish finder GPS plotter like you would see on like a boat on the lake. I've got it right there on the, uh, on the port side of the companionway there. Um, and the Semrad's on the helm. And the other one's a handheld unit, you know, like a hiking GPS, but it's for marine. It's a Garmin. Um, everything else is uh, pretty much factory as far as like the lighting we're going to upgrade it to LEDs when we get there uh, back to Florida here in a month because um, we're going to resplash the boat and um, cross the bay again go back to St. Petersburg and uh, hang out there for a few months and then we're we're probably going to cast the lines and probably go to the Bahamas. That's the plan anyway. And the last question is what I want out of all of it. Well, I just want to go to the Caribbean and explore and do it at my time, you know, do it at my leisure. Um, I don't want to do it by someone else's schedule. I want to do it on mine. Um, we plan on... Uh, cruising the Caribbean for at least, oh, I'd say at least three years, maybe longer, you know, just, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm planning around five, five to six years. We're going to be out at sea. So go from there. I'd like to make my way to Puerto Rico, um, hang out down there for a little while and go on down to the Azor Islands and all that other stuff. Um, but I think we're going to do Panama first. We're going to do the Western Caribbean and uh, see what we think of it down there and uh, just go from there. That's about it. And um, uh, the next video, we'll uh, sit down and we'll talk about the, uh, the cost and the process it was to get to where we're at and uh, what was difficult versus what was easier than we thought it'd be and what was harder than we thought it'd be. Um, the surprises and downfalls and ups and downs of it all. It's been a quite of a roller coaster ride getting transitioned to buying a boat that's on the ocean. Um, 
versus buying a boat for the lake. It's a, the process is the same. The paperwork's a little different because you got, you're in different states and stuff like that, but in the Coast Guard documentation and stuff like that, it was a little different. Um, but yeah, we'll go through all that too on a video. We'll uh, probably do that next weekend. Um, so make sure you uh, stick around and subscribe and post a few questions down. Leave a comment. I mean, it helps the, the YouTube algorithms, I guess. Like I said is it earlier before, <laughs> I want to get popular on YouTube. <laughs> Let's all be honest here. That's what we're doing it for. Um, it's just straight up honesty, man. I want to be famous on YouTube. I want to make money off YouTube. I want to do it. <laughs> you know, let's let's all do it. I mean, where that that's what we're all doing it for. But anyways, this is sailing abroad. It was nice uh finally getting the time to sit down and make a video for once. Um next weekend we should be able to pump another one out for you. And we'll go over the the cost and the process and the things we've gone through and our experience with uh getting the boat and getting it on the water and getting it hauled out and all the stuff associated with that. But anyways, until then, you guys be safe out there and I hope to see y'all out there soon.